Hello everyone, today we're going to cover how to efficiently serve an LLM. There are a few optimizations shared by the research uh, currently and we're going to go through them and hopefully they are going to um, help us and be beneficial for you. So this is a general inference um, architecture where you have different users sending requests uh, to your inference uh, server received by scheduler the scheduler would decide which requests sh uh, should be uh, served at different moments. You have your model. Uh, it's running on GPU, definitely. There are no models running on CPU, especially LLMs uh, at the moment. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, the, mo the two most important steps in LLMs are, or L in LLM inference is pre-fill phase and decode phase. First, once the request is received uh, the prefill phase starts computing the activations of the input tokens in parallel to generate what we call the kv cache and it also generates the first token uh, that is the out first output token then uh, we go into the next phase which is the decode phase this phase uh, happens autoregressively which means each token is being generated one by one so a general theme is that the prefill phase can happen in parallel. So you have all your input tokens known. You just um, do, uh, compute the KV cache or the activations in parallel. But to generate output tokens, you have to do them sequentially one by one. And the, most of the optimizations that we're going to cover uh, uh, tackles how can we make the decode phase more efficient. So uh, just like the pricing for different models, for example, we have GPT-40, we have the output 3x, the price of the input. So this is directly relates to the previous uh, step where, or previous slide when we show that the pre prefill phase is much faster because it can be computed in parallel and it's use, it uses the GPU ability of doing computations in parallel. Uh, for LLM inference, you, for the recently released Llama 3, 405 billions, you would see different wide range of um, pricing for inference. So uh, some companies like, or startups like Deep Infra and Fireworks are cheaply serving like $3 while other companies doing it like multiples. So using the optimizations um, we're going to cover today, we're going to efficiently go down in the inference costs. So let's start. Uh, first we have batching, uh, the most popular one. Uh, so why do a single request uh, at a time? We we discussed before the decode phase happens sequentially, so it's not doesn't take a lot of compute. So you can batch different requests as much as your memory can accumulate. And once a request completes, you can just uh, do in-flight batching, which means you add the newly received request to the uh, currently running batch. So that's the first one. Uh, second one, and also popular, is quantization. So LLMs are generally trained in either FP32 or FP16, which are the number of bits that represented, uh, represents different parameters. On inference, you can do quantize, you quantize or reduce the precision for each parameter from 32 or 16 to uh, 8. So in this situation, we have, have it quantized into int, int 8. And then you're going to do outlier clipping to just remove the outliers. And then you're going to do uh, rounding to the nearest integer. This way, you're saving memory. Uh, you're saving a lot of memory, so you can post more requests. But the trade-off here is accuracy uh, and it depends on what is the quantization algorithm that you're using but that's generally a trade-off here so uh, another optimization is called uh, stall stall free scheduling or prefill chunking so the idea here is b here stands for prefill decode stands and d stands for decode so if you chunk your prefill into smaller chunks you can add it to the decode uh, phase so uh, by doing this 
uh, what you would gain is you can do uh, both at the same time so you'd save time uh, uh, that in context we have like uh, VLM the most popular open source inference engine it prioritizes the briefle so one C and D are new requests so what uh, what VLM will do is just preempt the two running requests decode and then does the prefill for the new requests and then does all the decode after that other uh, prioritizing schedules we have like decode prioritizing the opposite one it just keeps the running decodes running and once they are all completed it will start prefill for the new requests so that's the optimization it's, it's called prefill chunking then at the opposite of this uh, is called uh, prefill decoding this aggregation architecture where you have uh, dedicated instances for prefill dedicated instances for decoding and use your CPU uh, to transfer the cache from the prefill phase to the decode phase uh, the benefit here is that by having dedicated instances you can optimize or the different procedures taken by the different uh, steps. Another optimization is called prefix caching, where you reuse uh, the computed uh, KV activations. So the most popular example here is uh, ChatGPT or any chatbot. You have your chat history. Uh, instead of just recomputing the chat from the beginning every time, you would reuse the part when you have in common which is called the prefix. Other uh, examples are if you have, if you're doing in-context learning, you have few shots in your prompt, you can reuse this few shot examples instead of just recomputing it uh, for every single prompt. And this is uh, how it's implemented. Uh, it's, it's used, um, it's called prefix tree or try if you're familiar with data structures. It's something similar to this. So what you would do is you would generate, uh, you would add the different prefixes as a tree, and then you try to match once you get when once you get a new request. And because of because the cache is limited, you need an eviction policy. So you either implement it using least recently used or least frequently used, but you have you need a way to evict cache when it when it gets like to the max. Uh, this is an another simple optimization which is early rejection so if you have a prediction model that tells you whether you will be able to uh, service this request or not once you receive it uh, it will help you avoid the struggle where you accept the request go through the briefing phase and then while doing the decode phase you just realize that you can't service this request so it's helpful to from the beginning say no I can't uh, service this one uh, another optimization is uh, called network compression uh, it's KV compression sorry so in this case uh, this is the briefing phase it's it, 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 the network is a, 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 a smaller part because you're just receiving the request but in the decode phase you need to keep moving a big KV cache for the input uh, generated KV cache and then uh, this will take like the most of the time so by compressing the KV cache uh, when transferring over the wire you would reduce the time needed for decoding one thing to mention is uh, you need there is an overhead when you compress and decompress anything so just only do this when the context is over 16,000 uh, tokens. That's what the paper suggests. Another optimization is called page detention. Uh, that's the idea that VLM was built on top of. It's a simple one. It is, if you're familiar with paging from operating systems, having a virtual memory mapped to a physical memory through a paging table. Uh, this helps us uh, don't face any fragmentation, memory fragmentation errors by um, by not reallocating memory. You would have your logical uh, um, 
memory map to the physical memory uh, and using this table you would just map the memory location in the physical memory but uh, this comes with an overhead so paging takes an overhead between 6 and 20 27% uh, due to memory management a recent technique uh, avoids this overhead by doing deferred reclamation so it's the idea behind it is you can reuse the same memory you allocated for previously ended requests um, uh, to service the new requests and you would have the kv cache contiguous in memory so you don't need the in memory management step which contributes to the overhead another optimization is uh, from the user experience perspective it's called quality of experience uh, so any user has two important metrics that is most important to him or to them the first one is time to face token which is how long it takes him or to, to take uh, to receive the first token and the other metric is the token delivery speed so this paper for um, formalizes a uh, optimization problem where it optimizes for the time to first token while keeping the time token delivery speed faster than the user's reading speed so uh, it focuses on user experience one last optimization is speculative decoding where you have a smaller model doing the response generation while the main model the bigger model uh, doing just verification uh, to this generation uh, this way it keeps the same accuracy but uh, doing the generation faster this way instead of having the bigger model doing the generation so that was uh, pretty much what i wanted to cover uh, this is like small tweaks that should improve the lm inference uh, thank you uh, and see you in the next video